So a lot of you guys want to know what mods I have on Dusty, why she's shooting flames and all that stuff. Well, here we go. Today I'm going to explain all that stuff and I'll explain the mods that I have done. I have two other videos where I've done, when I've done this, but today's video is going to be a little bit more in depth. Also, I'm going to explain to you what mods you should get if you're trying to, you know, just make your car fun. Uh, if it's worth it, um, what companies to go for, stuff like that for quality, stuff like that. So here we go. So we're gonna start with the simple things first. I'm gonna start with the exterior of the car, then we're gonna go into the engine bay, and then we're going to the interior. So let's start with my lip. I got this lip from eBay. I think it's called A-Spec lip or something like that. Don't mind how dirty Dusty is. I've been driving a lot, boy. But yeah, I got this lip off of eBay for like $60, $70, something, something like that. And I paint matched it myself for $50. As you guys can see, I got in a little scuffle. I was driving through a deep puddle. And you guys know how puddles are in Florida. They're more like lakes. And it scratched it and then took off some of the paint. But after that, good quality lip. Can't complain. The price is perfect. Uh, simple. I could buy this. I could buy like five of these if I wanted to. And just keep them stocked in my room. But it's no point in me doing that. Next thing, let's talk about my tires and my wheels. Well, let's just talk about the wheel setup. So these are 595 Federal Tires on a 17, 17 by nine plus 35 offset uh, rim. These are Alhan A, 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 H06 or something like that. Uh, I put a picture up here if you guys wanna, you know, see what they look like without a tire and stuff. But yeah, then I got Multitech, Moloto Tech, whatever it's called, uh, Nug Nuts. Oh, my tire size is 235s, 40s, so you know I could grip, cause this thing will, will burn through some tires if I, you know, do like a first gear pull so these 235s actually help me a lot um my opinion on the 595 tires is it's pretty good for the price you can get a, a good pair but not even a pair you get a, a good set of four for like i bought mine for under 300 dollars. So i think i paid 265 for all four and they're 235 so and they're 17s by the way gotta make sure i mention that because a lot of people are gonna be like bro i can't find them for that price you just mentioned it's because they're 17s but um yeah, I got all four for like 260, 270 around that range. And uh I guess I could say I put like 20,000 miles, 30,000 miles on them so far. Or less? No, I probably put like 10,000 miles on it. Or a little bit like 15,000 miles on it. And I have no complaints. One thing I'm going to say is that when it's wet outside, it is kind of dangerous to drive them. Like I wouldn't recommend you getting these tires if you like going to do pulls in the rain, which you shouldn't be doing cuz your car is front wheel drive. But yeah, um a little dangerous when it's what is wet outside because you got hydroplane but that's what any tires to be honest unless like you got some type of crazy i don't even know tire but yeah after that pretty good tire groups well when it's when it's warm when it's cold I, that thing will spin boy but once it gets warmed up pretty decent tire a lot of you guys probably wondering why i go 17s when i was just on 18s i want 17s because it's smaller um so when it's smaller it's actually less weight these these rims are actually i think 20 pounds no 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 i think they're 22 pounds which is pretty decent for you know rep wheels so i have no complaints about the rims the rims are pretty pretty good i love them now let's talk about the rear of the car there's nothing really special about the back of the car i just have uh tinted tail lights that i bought from I actually forgot where i bought these tinted tail lights well the, the vinyl tent i forgot where i bought it but when I remember, you guys can look in the description and uh, it should be there. Those cost me $25. Um, that's really it for the rear. Bought these off of eBay. I have a video on these. So if you guys want to go do this, just go click the link that I'm going to put up right here. And it'll take you to this video if you guys want to do this. It has the link in the, uh, the description. I keep saying bio, but it has the link in the description as well for that. Then I have a password JDM. Um, granny flap. Do I say it's worth it? Hell no. I spent $200, you guys can't even see me, like I'm, I'm mad, but y'all can't see how mad I am, hold on. I spent $200 on a carbon freaking gurney flap that wasn't even clear coated and lasted me four months before it turned white and I had to re-clear it. And I just never took the time to do it. But I finally did it, I sanded it down, re-cleared it, and it's, it's, it's holding up okay, as you guys can see. It's holding up okay. Well, the camera makes it look bad, but in person, it's not that bad. But would I recommend you buying one of these? Heck no. I say get the carb. I don't know what the other brands call, but you guys probably know what I'm talking about. 
it's like car car design car design something like that i'd rather get one of those than the password jdm because this crap is trash i do love it though because it does look nice it looks pretty badass on the car but it's trash i also have this carbon fiber roof spoiler that i bought for ebay a couple years ago probably three years ago and it's fading i need to get a new one it wasn't even that expensive it was like 160 dollars and as you guys can see the clear coat is failing like it's terrible now but i need to get a new one um that that right there is really annoying me like how ugly it looks and it's turn it's starting to turn a different color but yeah when i had it looking nice it was fire bro but now that crap ugly what i say is worth it yeah you just have to take care of it that's it i didn't really take good care of it i mean i did wax it here and there but my car sits out in the sun a lot so the sun just ate up through the clear and uh yeah man it's just it's just a it just look ugly now that thing look like me now that was really it for the exterior of the car now we're gonna talk about what i have inside and y'all know i got inside y'all been keeping up with the videos boy it's fire so inside of the car i have these carbon fiber wrapped i forgot what these are called it took me a little minute to do it i think i filmed a video on this i don't know i have to check but these are carbon fiber wrapped i got it on both sides definitely cleans up the interior a lot because like i feel like the si comes with a little bit too much silver in a black interior and i feel like it doesn't look nice but yeah i did those probably a couple months ago and they last pretty pretty damn long uh i say i did this about four or five months ago and it still looked pretty good if you guys have been a long time subscriber of the channel you guys know that i wrap my steering wheel this is uh what's it called I'll just put the link in the description because I don't even remember the name of this, but it cost me $50, but it cost me like eight hours of my life. And do I say it's worth it? Hell yeah, it's different, boy. This thing is different. I love it. I would never say like I, this was a stupid mod, even though it took eight hours of my life. But yes, bro, this crap was fire. I'll never do it again, but is it worth it? Hell yeah. Next thing I have, well, it's not even like an interior thing, but it's inside the car. I have my K-Tuner. Uh, that cost me $450 or $460. Though I say it's worth it. Yes, it's worth it as long as you're trying to just stay full bolt-on for the rest of your car life. If you're trying to do anything else like turbo or like nitrous and stuff like that, I don't think you should really invest in getting a K-Tuner. I'll say go Honda, which I really want, which uh, if you guys are interested, probably like a couple months from now, I'm going to be selling my K-Tuner for probably like $300. So uh, it'll be a good little thing if you guys are not trying to go turbo and you guys are trying to stay full bolt ons for like, you know, just a daily driver. But yeah, for what it is and what I have on the car, I say it's worth it. Tuners don't really like it because it takes a long time to upload and the software is weird. But uh, Durf, he did an amazing job with the tune. Uh, I, have no, I have no problems with the car and uh, yeah, but I definitely got to get Honda. And bro, I am blacker than my car interior. What the? The next thing I have in my car is my hybrid racing short shifter. I did a recent video on this. So you guys want to go check it out. Definitely worth it. If you use my code Zuvi, you can get this for 380 which is a damn steal over a cuties. Because I know a cuties is a little expensive. Hybrid racing got the plug. I'm the plug, bro. You guys should go get one, bro. For real, for real. This thing is amazing. I love it have no complaints i wish I, I wish they made this sooner because like bro i've been waiting on hybrid to make a shifter for us for so long and i'm glad i waited and didn't get the cutie because yo this thing is this thing is crazy now that's really it for the interior i like to keep my interior nice and stock looking with a little slight modifications like you know the open shift knob well not shift knob open shifter which is pretty damn cool in my opinion because the hybrid racing shifter is fire bro it looks so damn good but yeah that's really it for the interior now let's get to the heart of the motor heart of the motor now let's get to the heart of dusty the engine so right here we have the k24z7 stock head stock block these come stock in the ninth gen s size uh, if you was to blow your k24 or well, well if you was to blow your z7 a direct fit will be the Z3 from the TSX, and uh, only thing you have to change is your water pump, and I think something with your oil pan or something like that. I am tuned by Durf Tuning in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. I made 218, 171 torque on stock uh, stock injectors, which are which are 310 cc injectors. 
Uh, do I plan on making more power? Yes. But I don't feel like making it all motor. I would love to make some power on some boost or like some nitrous or something. But that's something in the future that I'm going to worry about. Right now, I'm just enjoying the car for what it is. Uh, stock, a little fun daily. So Mazda, I have done the dust. They are my three and a half inch K2 intake with a custom duct that I made. It actually runs from my fog light up to the intake. So I always get fresh, cool air. If you guys are wondering if you could use this uh, intake on your stock manifold, you can't because this is made for the RBC only. Um, k -Tune does make an intake, but it sits behind, like the by, like by the transmission area. It doesn't sit in front of the headlight. Now, is it worth it to get a K-Tune three and a half inch intake? I say yes, if you're RBC swap like me, because it sits like right behind the headlight, and you can do what I did to run like a little duck into the intake, so you know, you always get fresh, cool air. The reason why I didn't go with a cold air intake is because I live in South Florida, and if you guys know in South Florida, it floods a lot. Well, it doesn't flood, but we get big puddles and uh, I drive through that a lot when I go to work so I didn't want to risk hydro locking my motor like a couple people I know and uh, yeah man I'm just I just wasn't down for it plus I still get the same benefits of everybody else as a who who's running a cold air I still get I basically made one bro I don't you feel me I'm smart I'm innovative next on my model list is my RBC I paid 180 for my RBC got it used off of Facebook forums so to install the RBC, all you'll need is the PRL adapter kit. It comes with everything that's needed to get the RBC on. After that, you need to decide if you're gonna run stock injectors or if you're gonna run some bigger injectors. I wanted to run stock injectors, so I needed the P2R adapter kit, which is for the injectors, injector adapter kit. But yeah, that ran me $50. The PRL adapter kit ran me $150. But yeah, man, you can always get everything used for cheap and uh, end up paying $100 for everything in total. So. Yeah. I also have a downpipe. The downpipe is a skunk 2 3 inch downpipe. You guys can't really see it, but it's back there. I picked up that downpipe for a steal, bro. I got that downpipe for $120. Retail, brand new, they go for like $380 or something like that. I got it for $120. Bro, I, I'm telling you, bro, when you find stuff used, you save so much money. A lot of people complain about the downpipe hissing and stuff. I haven't experienced none of the hissing noises or anything like that. I also do have a rear motor mount that's made by Hasport. Uh, it's a 70A, and uh, I guess that's the reason why my downpipe hasn't cracked yet. I know like a lot of people downpipes crack, but I haven't got to experience that yet. But yeah, man, the Skunk 2 downpipe, is it worth it? Hell yeah, sounds good. Um, to be honest, any downpipe is worth it. If you're able to get a Rev9 downpipe, it's worth it, because those come out for $100, and I know people who sell it for probably $80, $50 used. So yeah, bro. It's definitely worth to get a down part. I also have a pseudo 2.75 inch exhaust. Now this is exhaust, I love it. It's my first mod I ever put on the car. And it sounds so damn good. I just wish that I could find them because I can't find them no more. And when I do find them, it's like on eBay for like a thousand dollars. And I'm not paying a thousand dollars for a two hundred dollar exhaust. Cause I think I bought it for like two fifty or something like that. But yeah, man. I wish I could find an exhaust. I would love to get a new one. Cause this one's getting beat it up because it's shooting flames and it's I, I just need a new exhaust, bro. And that's really it from the engine. Um, supporting things I have on the car is I have a QD bushings that helps me, you know, better shifting. Then I have a cash can that I bought for eBay. I really need to change out these. These are like killing me. I hate rust, but yeah, I got an eBay cash can that ran me like $20. And actually does pretty good. If I was to show you what's in there, you'd be like, what the hell? But yeah, man, that's really it for the motor. Oh, almost forgot. I am on Rev9 callovers. I know a lot of people are kind of iffy on Rev9, but to be honest, for the price that I paid, I can't I can't complain. Like, I have no problems with these. These been on the car for at least four years now, and not one issue. And they ride good, they're quiet, no clunky noises, and they're sit, they sit pretty nice. So Rev9, if you're watching this, bro, sponsor your boy. I see you guys got the, the Type 3s or something like that out. You know, sponsor your boy, man. I hope you guys get a lot of sales. A lot of people ask me about y'all. I'm just trying to, I'm helping y'all, so y'all gotta help me too, please. Before somebody asks me where's your battery, my battery is literally right here. When you buy your K2 intake, they give you a relocation kit for your battery. Um, one thing I'm gonna say is that when you get your battery, I mean, when you get your kit, make sure you get a clutch line that's long enough to reach it, to reach your, your slave, because if you don't, you're not gonna be able to run this. Or, I think somebody in the forum said they got their stock slave to fit by flipping it upside down. I mean, they got their stock clutch line to flip by flipping the clutch line upside down. If I would have known that, I would never have bought this. But, 
Hey man, you live and you learn, bro. You live and you learn. So another mod that I did was painting my valve cover. I don't even know if they could count that as a mod, but it's different and it's something that, you know, doesn't come stock in the car. So yeah, painting my valve cover for like, I don't even know, I, I think it was like $20, $20, $35, something like that. And it came out pretty decent, which it came out better. Does look really, really good on the car. Like really, really good. But yeah, if I could get this hydro dipped or can I, if I could get it like powder coated or something like that, I definitely will do that. Would I recommend you doing this to your valve cover? Yes, if you want to be cheap. No, if you want it to look nice. But I want it to be cheap. I want something different. It's easy to actually get another valve cover. They literally cost like $40, $50. So this is where I'm going to end off the video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hopefully I answered all the questions you guys DM me about and uh, give y'all give y'all some guidance about, you know, modding your car and what mods you should get, what mods you should not get. But yeah, man, if you guys enjoyed the video, please leave a like, comment, subscribe, follow your boy on Instagram at underscore got the soda and your boys out. Peace.